Many people expect to be the change <laughs> rather than being changed. Hola, my name is David Ortega. I'm 18 years old and from Little Rock, Arkansas. I have been involved with Global Missions for a majority of my life. My parents, Caesar and Elizabeth Ortega, are the founders of a nonprofit organization called One Life Global Ministries. Both of my parents are native to Honduras, which gave them a longing to help the people. One Life was started in 2010 when their hearts were broken to the reality of life that the people of a small village called San Nicolas were living. Este es mi cama B. ¿Este? Esta B. Esta rosa. Y esta es de mi papi y de mi mamá. ¿Qué? Fíjate que le dejan tu enseño. Ahí está, te gente. This is the, the. A lot of people in the community live in these small homes and. Here in One Life, we have the opportunity to serve this community, serve these people, and provide you know a, a better uh, houses to live in this community. That's what we do: serving people, loving people, and showing them that God loves them through uh, everything we do. Uh, and we show them that Jesus is going to provide for them. He's the one who's providing for them. Can you imagine living in a place like this? I think Daddy would appreciate that. This is the reality of Honduras. When they witnessed the locals scavenging through the city dump, trying to find any food they could eat, my parents knew they needed to make a difference. From this, I've had a different upbringing than many other teenagers my age. Spending many summers serving in Honduras, I have gained a unique understanding of important values and cultures. Throughout the years, I expect to go to be the change, but instead I always end up leaving changed. The people of San Nicolas have taught me that joy should not be dependent on my circumstances or possessions, but rather in spending time with loved ones. They also have taught me about the importance of community and helping other people. Lastly, I learned to have gratitude in every area of my life. Throughout my time serving in San Nicolas, I couldn't help but notice the amount of joy the community shared. From the children to the elderly, each person seemed to be filled with this genuine happiness that was contagious while with them. I asked myself how they could be this joyful when most of them lived below the poverty line. I came to a realization that their joy didn't come from the things that they had, but instead it came from the time they spent together and by making the most with what they had. This taught me to care less about having the latest and greatest gadgets that will be outdated in a couple of years, but instead build memories with the people that I love, memories that will last forever. The people of San Nicolas also taught me the importance of community. Even though they did not have much, the locals made sure to help each other with whatever they could because everyone depended on each other. This was the only way they could manage to make it through life. The village would come together and help lay concrete down in other people's houses for free because they loved to help each other. Everyone seemed to be so close with each other because they depended on each other so much. Back in the US, we get so caught up in our everyday lives that we don't pay attention to the needs of others. By slowing down and taking some time to observe around us and help others, we are able to make a major impact in other people's lives. Lastly, the village of San Nicolas taught me the importance of gratitude. Complaining is one of the easiest things to do and can often overpower the ability to have gratitude. Before when life came into the community, the majority of people in the village did not have running water or electricity. But through the HOPE project, 
the organization was able to bring electricity and running water to this small community. This was a complete game changer for the village. By using the electricity in their homes, it sparked micro enterprises in the village. From a pastor making shoes to earn money to support his household, to families having small convenience stores in the community, the people were now able to provide a living for their own and slowly lift themselves out of poverty. Electricity and running water are considered bare necessities in the United States. We never know how reliant we are on them until they're gone. We often take these things for granted because we have never known life without them. By intentionally counting our blessings, we are able to remain humble by the gifts we have been given, and in turn, be proactive in ways we can be used to help others who are less advantaged, both at home and across the world. I was taught, to whom much has been given, much is required. I have been given so much, therefore much is required of me. As I go out and begin this new chapter of my life, I want to live with a grateful heart, always looking for ways in which I can make a difference, one person at a time.